much now each one of these hinges is in nice and solid. Now the next step is to relieve. We need a notch in here for the horn so it can go through its full travel and a little bit of a clearance here so that the horn the horn shouldn't sit on the end of this it should be recessed in just a little bit so that the hinges sit right in the middle and it takes a little bit of a notch like that to do it now here's one of the things that can be a little tricky or a little difficult I have the hinges just pressed in but also the horn isn't really touching I've got a little bit of a gap now the reason is when I when I go to full deflection normally I want to have full deflection at about well between 30 and 45 degrees so that's plenty now I can minimize that if I press the horn in any tighter I'm gonna lose some of that control now since nothing's glued in I want to have that that setting to be when my hinge line shuts and we're gonna fly this we'd never even consider flying any plane without taped hinge lines do not omit that step especially if you're looking to have competitive performance but now that that gap is now set in my little bushing now I can just drop some thick CA thin CA in here and that sets the bushing in place now with the bushing set in place then I need to drop one drop of CA on each hinge and set the hinges now you really don't want to have the, the CA go on the hinge I try to get it dropped right on the corner and it wicks its way in that seems to be the best way to do it is get it right on the edge of the, the crevice there and just let it wick its way in now you can see we built up some three or four coatings I took some of them covering away so that I could get a better glue joint that's just thick CA but that now you also could use the little the fillets help this too but I like to have those little bushings in there and because again we're using this like a taxi cab I anticipate getting a lot of flights on this plane so you might you may get away without using those at you know you know on a plane you're only gonna fly once a weekend or something but this one we're not now the thing I found and we're ready to glue the hinges in now nothing is binding up yet but what I found works well when I've tried to glue right on the hinge what happens it seems like anyway that a lot of it gets in the barrel so what I do is I go let me get this up close I go along the edge of the crack on both sides and let it wick in As soon as it wicks in then I kind of squeeze that hinge and keep moving it may have to get in there and scrape that off because the ultimate thing here is we want to have real we want the control smooth and you don't want to wait until you're ready to fly the plane to do this you don't want to fly the first flight and you got a ratcheting control system now and this may be you how big the slot is so it's it's easy if nothing else you're sealing up the slot I'd be thinking if you just seal up the slot enough is going to get down by the hinge and while the, while the CA is kicking off just I call this babysitting just keep moving the controls Now, once you know all the hinges are in solid, and I mean, be, pull this apart and see if the hinges are in solid. They are. The horn should be there solid. The last step, okay, everyone is in. The last step on this is going to be, and I'm real fussy about having smooth controls, and especially when you put hinge line tape on and then you think, oh, they're, they're binding up. Five flights later, the binding goes away. Hinge line tape on an ARF is a critical thing because by an ARF's very nature it's a little heavier than it would be if you made it with your custom uh, you know custom wood or whatever it's it's made with the best wood available or if you keep in mind it like some of the ARFs that come from the Ukraine or semi ARFs whatever we're gonna call them where they're half built or fully built those planes are in the three thousand dollar range this is 150 it's just a little bit different so you've got to do a little bit of the, the legwork on this with well, some of the common sense things that most people would would know would be you need smooth controls if there's no other part of the model you spend a little extra time on the controls now what I do is and I'll give this a couple of minutes 
You can do it that way, do it this way. Just work that for a minute or so and you'll see the controls will just work their way right in. The WD-40 is capillary. And we won't put the hinge line tape on until the plane is completely assembled, but now what we're going to have to do is pretty much the same exact thing we did here, except do it at some future. I don't know what the next step is. Maybe it is the next step. we got to do it as, well, we're going to go by the rule, but I'm just thinking this is exactly the same thing, because I don't want to repeat it over and over again. But when we put the hinges, the flaps, onto the back of the wing, we're going to use exactly the same technique, and so we won't have to repeat it would have to be redundant about it. Now at some point in time, these controls, when you work them, they should, they should be very free. And if they're not, another if you've got a little binding in there, one of the things you can do is just watch a TV show or something, or watch, watch one of those fabulous windy videos, and work the controls. But you want to break them in before that first flight. You do not want to have sticky controls on the first flight, or misalign controls. And this is a big step. This is one of the things that even if you've even if you've not flown a model in a long time, it's gonna make or break the model is the quality of the hinges being free and everything being in alignment. Now these line up pretty well. So we've got the alignment good, we've got the hinging good, the horn good. This is this is a very nice uh, assembly right now for our model. Now again, I'm really, I'm really fanatical about getting these controls nice and smooth. But the last thing, and this is, this is an important thing before we install a tail, because once this is in the fuselage, it's going to be difficult to see the alignment on the elevators. Is look down. I'm just trying to show this and see that you have that these are in perfect, and I mean perfect alignment. That is really a critical thing. And that tail. Now we're ready to put the tail in when it comes to that step. And I try to sight it in a lot of different ways to see. Now, keep in mind, a lot of times, looking at it from that way, a lot of times you can have this horn in perfectly straight, and after you put the hinges in, it'll move just slightly. So it's always good. Just give it that eyeball test before you go any further. That's a, that's a critical test right at this point. Now, it could be... That, that one of two things has happened. We've got, we've, we're missing in the hardware pack, we have the push rod, but we only have one ball swivel link. And I don't understand why. I've looked carefully, but we have two push rod ends. So I don't really know if this is supposed to have this. In fact, I'm gonna to have to find out. But because I wanna finish this, and I have the rest of the day to finish it, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work in my, I don't wanna sit and wait a couple of days to get a replacement ball link and it's the weekend the hobby shops aren't open I can't even run down and get one so what I'm going to do is improvise and put a normal end on one end of the push rod but this end would get it's very important we're going to have this at the tail is to clean the inside of this get scratch this up everything needs to be scratched and then JB weld exactly what it says to do on a drawing except we're only going to use this on one end and then, of course, thread the ball link on. So this is the first little glitch that we've run into. And, and it may be that this is just because this is a pre-production one. Maybe, maybe this is just a problem in this one and not with the rest of them. But if they do have ball links on both ends. But, but what I'm reading here and what, what came in a kit or in the ARF is two just slightly different things. Not a deal breaker, and again, a lot of people are not gonna to wanna to use ball links anyway. They're gonna to wanna to make a regular push rod. Some people are gonna fall in love with ball links. So rather than make a deal out of it, I wanna get moving on this project. I'll get the JB Weld mixed up. This needs to be sanded. Get in there and sand it good. Put it in, give that a couple hours to dry. Now our good friend Bernie Trent gave us these little sanding sticks, which look just about perfect to get in there grind away some of that material. In fact, if I just get this off one side, the rest will go right in. You need to scratch that up. And even though this has these little ridges, I'd feel safer. In fact, I'm going to wrap a little extra carbon fiber on these because I always think 
Redundancy, again, we're gonna use this like a taxi cab. If you're just using this for a sport model, that's probably really overkill and it won't matter. And also I've got a little bit of Brodac thinner as they recommend. Get that perfectly clean before the JB Weld goes in there. In my case, because I'm going to put a little carbon fiber on the outside, I also, boy, you get goop out of there too. And again, these arrow shaft ends, push rod ends, these are all like, like buying a pair of shoes. What works for one person sometimes doesn't work for the other person. And believe me, when you think of the thousands of thousands of things that have to go into the making up of one of these products, just the fact that we got one little baby speed bump here, it's almost inconsequential. A JB Weld is one of those products every modeler should really have. Thousands of uses in the world of modeling. The only thing I would suggest is if you have two choices, there's quick dry five minute JB Weld and long dry, which is about 45 minutes you're probably going to be a lot happier with the result of a 45 minute to long dry. And it also gives you a little work in time. Now we want to take that push rod that has the one end because we're going to have to improvise here. This is one of the things we, we're going to need to do. And let me just get this threaded on there. And this is another one of those steps that you can't, if you get this wrong, it's a real problem. And when people have a ball link failure, it's almost always that they've done something wrong, not sanded inside the part, or not gotten. The, in the past, what would happen if the fit was too tight, all the JB welded squeeze out. Well, now with those little ridges, there's a lot less chance that's going to happen. But even so, I'd kind of work that in. Now, what I'm just going to do for my own, and again, It's a little security. I'm going to take a little bit of carbon fiber and before this is even dry, I'm going to wrap this with some carbon fiber tow and CA so that there's no chance that can pull out. Again, I just tacked that on now. I'm waiting for it to dry. Thin CA. I'm wrapping this maybe out an inch or so and wrapping it back. I want to go up over the part, some amount anyway. Again, for a, a model flown on weekends, might not, in fact, I'd say probably definitely not necessary, but you're making a taxi cab. Now, just a few drops of thin CA on that, and a little light sanding, and you've got a, a really good redundancy system. And now what I'm going to have to do is the other, and, and I'm not sure that there just isn't a mistake in the directions here after I read it four or five times. Maybe what they want you to do is put the other end, there are two push rod ends, so maybe it's just that I've read the directions incorrectly. But, but again, this is the whole reason for having pre-production models and then production models, so when these things actually go into production, all these little kinks are ironed out. Now, even if you were doing a traditional ball link, uh, that that may be a decent way to do it. I just, I know a lot of people have had these pull out when it's done incorrectly. When it's done correctly, it's not a problem at all. And I'd seal that up with a final coat. Of, that, that's just going to be a real good redundancy. I'm, I'm happy the way that worked out. And I'm not sure that's the way it's supposed to be, but one of the things we're going to have to figure out here very soon. Because we really do want to get this flying tomorrow. That is really one of my priorities. We're in this, this incredible, it's right before Christmas, and there's a time window 
we have the next actually today is one of the days tomorrow is in the 60s it's an incredible chance to fly this get it trimmed get some dvd shot because this is a this is certainly one of the things we're going to have with us for a long time to come it's another thing to keep in mind you never want to have this just hanging off by one or two threads i want to have at least half of that threaded material on there at minimum of half when we start doing the alignment and I'm just cleaning this up. Might be a good way to do all ball links in the future if somebody's going to use them. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's a cheap, re kind of invented on the fly here. That's a cheap redundancy system. And I think that's one that I'd sleep better at night, even now before the JB Weld is, is not even dry. That's, that's not coming out. But now on the other end, we're going to put that other, the other side of the push rod. So I'm just for my own notation because we do want to do upgrades on these things. That's a question mark. To a, now to attach this end, it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to grind those little notches in here just like they did on, and I'll do that with a Dremel tool. But I don't know the final length yet. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do the assembly the next couple of steps. Figure out what my length is, get everything in neutral, and then tack this. And then figure out, then put the JB weld and whatnot in there. But it's, it's just making this a little tricky, but it's still, it gives you another choice of a way to do it. Now, because the kit came with, the, the ARF came with with two of these, I'm not sure that isn't the way they wanted to do it. But it's it's one of the things that I haven't, I haven't really figured out yet, looking at the directions. So I roughened that up. Now, I'm going to take the other end of the, where's the, where's the push rod? Take the other end of the push rod. And roughen that up inside and out because I want to basically do the same thing I did with the, uh, I want JB Weld on the inside. Or maybe I can do this on the outside. I'll have to see. This I have to leave uh, the jury out for a few minutes here. But before I can go any further on this, I need to know the total length. So I need to be able to have this adjustment. Again, get everything set and neutral. I really have to improvise this as I go. And it may, again because this isn't as clear as I probably should be. But, but what's going to happen, I'm sure John will upgrade this and put this into the things that, the little additions to the directions, maybe a little section on how, you, how he wanted to handle this. But the next thing is to find where neutral is on this push rod. Now there's a couple of things we really have to address before I put the flaps on the wing. And, and I'm doing this a little out of sequence, but this is a critical, absolutely critical thing. Where this bell crank is, it goes through little, the lead outs go through little copper bushings, and I want to put, this is motorcycle chain lube. Let me just show this on the, this is going to go in as a liquid and then turn to grease. You want to grease those lead outs and push rod before we go any further. And this is the way I can get in there. There's also another thing I noticed is the way this bell crank is mounted. And because these are not my controls, I'm not real familiar with how this, let me get this over here. Uh, what, what I think is going to have to happen is the nuts that hold this in place look like they're hand tight. I'd like to make them tighter than that. In other words, the one around the bell crank is done with, and that's actually a good way to do it. I'm not critiquing the way they've done these, but what I am critiquing is I want to make sure where, see the nuts that go up into the plywood. Let me go over this. This, this is really a critical thing. Where the bolt goes up into the plywood, they've put a nut. But there's nothing keeping the nut from getting loose. And as we use this model more and more, I want to get some epoxy, some glue, something in there, so that nut can't rotate. Now if you look down in there, you see how that, where that nut is? Okay, and then there's a nut up here. Well, I want that nut to be in some epoxy or some glue as a redundancy, and I want to see if it has a nut on the other side. It looks like all it needs is some epoxy or glue, and it'll be fine, but I, these, these are locking nuts around the bell crank, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a fine way to do it. That's not going to be an issue. What's an issue is, if that bolt up there comes loose, it could be dangerous. And so I would, number one, make sure these bolts are 
a little more than hand tight. Get in there with the forceps and then put some epoxy CA something in there. That that would be a good safety thing in my opinion. And may you know what probably would 99% of the time the person that flies this is never going to wear that out or make a problem. But when you look at something that may last year after year after year and and hundreds maybe even thousands of flights later and some rough abuse flying over grass, I'd want that as solid as I possibly could make it. So step one is I'm going to get in there with some thin CA as step one, harden that whole thing up, get plenty on the bolt, wouldn't hurt. Actually this is actually not a bad thing because we can soak all the joints around the mid spar area too. That'll add a little strength with almost no extra weight. Just float some thin CA in there. Now the bottom bolt I've got to look at, it's a little different. Now luckily this is the kind of thing that that you can still get in here and step one will be to get it tight. Okay, now once it's tight, drop on a little CA on that. That's a critical one. That's, that's something uh, that should be checked every time you build one of these. And I want to get in there and put a real a nice big glob of thick CA over the top of that so there's no way that can loosen up. Just let that cook. And so I buried the nut absolutely buried in thick CA. Same thing with the nut on the other side after I tightened it up. And I just double double check that, that everything we've got a little bit of play in the bell crank but that's about the amount you need. That should be fine. But I was just concerned with these nuts and bolts, and that's really well done. That, that's, that's not going to break now. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Let me just go back down in there. And they're buried now, buried in th thick and thin CA. Anyway, that's one of the things we uncovered that I think on future ones or on production ones that'll be not an issue but it's something that you really want to check and you want to be doubly careful and I'm sure John as he's as he's making the next the next production run will want to make all these little improvements but if you have one of the original ones that's one of the things you're going to want to just check. None of these things are big deals. It may, may not even be a problem if you didn't do anything but it's nice if you treat everything like it's going to last forever. At least that's how I would like to do it. Now because of the way we, this whole assembly evolved, and by the way the, the leadouts are wrapped real nice too. What's, what's appropriate now is exactly, and I won't put another 10 minutes on, is I'm going to attach the flaps and the horn because we're going to need to do that assembly and figure out the length of the push rod. So I'll do this part off camera. We'll come back to it at this point in time. And we should be, actually we're into it over three hours now, but, but we're coming up on, if we didn't have these little issues, I think right now we'd, we probably spent a half an hour resolving some of this stuff. And it's not a real big deal. But that's the whole purpose of doing a video, the whole purpose of adding those additional directions. You wanna make a product as good as you possibly can. So without any further ado, let me get the flaps on, get everything moving nice and free, and then we'll come back to this. And definitely another cup of coffee.